Hey, my name is Nick, and I'm so glad that you're joining us today. Wherever you're tuning in from, I just want to welcome you to the Faith Family. We're super excited to dive deeper into God's Word with you. God bless. How are you guys doing this morning? Good. All right, let's stand and let's worship our King. Sing this together, turn your ear. So turn your ear to heaven and hear the noise inside. It's the sound of angels, all the sound of angel songs in all this for a king. We could join and sing. Our King, our constant, how constant, how divine, the song of ours will rise. Oh, how constant, how divine, this love of ours will rise, will rise. Oh, praise Him. Oh, praise Him. He is holy. He is holy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. turn your gaze. So turn.
Holy Spirit, right now I pray for that anointing of David to fall on every heart right now. David, who was so filled with brokenness and shame, but still he chose to worship. He chose to praise and love you for who you are. He knew who he was in your image, despite his mistakes, despite his brokenness. So right now I pray on your church right now, would you give us that anointing of David, the heart of David to worship you no matter what we're going through, no matter what our circumstance, no matter what this life brings, that we choose to have that heart David had in the days of old. I just feel that right now he's anointing this room at that heart of worship, just like how David has, how he longed to be in his presence because that's how he was created in the image of God. He created, Jesus created humanity to be in his image, to just rest in his presence because that's how we were created to be. No matter what our circumstances, no matter what hardships, Jesus, that you would give us the strength to be like David, to dwell with you, to long to be with you. Because that's just who you are. You are a God who loves to be with his people.
given you a freedom that he has set you free he has set you free this morning he has set you free but here's the thing he has set you free for worship come on somebody he has set you free to give him some glory to give him some praise because ain't no circumstance gonna weigh us down ain't no relationship gonna distract us from our most important ministry and that is loving on the Lord today Lord because it is for freedom that you have set us free and so we declare freedom in this house this morning we are not going to be tied down in our souls with every anchor of the world in the name of Jesus but we are set free we are set free to give you glory the glory that you deserve today thank you Jesus and so this morning Lord, we come before you this morning with a heart of repentance, oh God. I believe that God is calling his people this morning. Because one of the things our culture struggles with today is idolatry. putting everything else ahead of God. But Lord, we don't want to be a generation that takes your presence for granted, Lord. So Lord, we repent for putting so many things before you, oh God. Lord, we humble ourselves at your feet. We're trying to do life on our own, trying to raise a family apart from you, allowing TV and entertainment to raise our children whenever our souls are in turmoil. 
And this morning, Lord, we make a declaration to put you first, to give you the glory that you deserve. Lord, because you set us free from all that. And so we don't run back into bondage anymore in the name of Jesus. But we receive your freedom this morning. Lord, that you would you clean house today. Lord, would you clean our homes today. Lord, would you begin to filter out all the things that are unnecessary today. Lord, that we might draw near to you. And just like David, Lord, that we would be a generation that never wants to be without your presence, without your spirit. And so, Lord, we submit this time of worship to you. Lord, that we don't just glorify you with our lips, but we glorify you in our hearts, in spirit, in your truth, oh God. Lord, that we might be a, a dwelling place for your spirit to rest on. Lord, because there's nowhere else that we'd rather be and in your presence, Lord, we would trade a thousand for one day in your presence, oh God. So thank you for giving us life today. And Holy Spirit, would you direct us on how to use it wisely? And in all these things, Lord, we ask that you would be glorified. And we give you all the honor, all the praise, and all the thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. Give him some praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. King Jesus. King Jesus. King Jesus, take your throne. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You might be seated this morning. I want you to turn around and just greet somebody next to you, if you would. Just tell them, good morning. It's good to see you. Could you love on somebody? Give them an air hug. An air five or something, the Bible says that uh, people will know that you are his disciples by the way that you love. So let me see you love on some people this morning. We got time. Thank you, Auntie C. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Love on some people today. Amen. I want to thank you for joining us today. Today's going to be really fun. I want you guys to pull out your Bibles. We go right into the word. We got a lot in store this morning. This is DOE Sunday. We're doing a new thing today. DOE Sunday, Department of Education, because I believe that we are uniquely positioned as a church. And there are members in our church, there are people in our church family that God has uniquely positioned to be right in the middle of where the war is at. Amen. And I believe that we are uniquely positioned with an influence and an opportunity to really resuscitate the next generation. I believe that, you know, with COVID and just everything that's going on and, and what life is like today, there are a lot of people who are, you know, just getting desensitized and, and, and you know, dreams are dying, you know, and and I believe that God has uniquely positioned a specific people to help resuscitate the work that he wants to do in our community. And I believe that God has placed people in the DOE, you know, because this is the season that we're in. You know, when I was in youth ministry, we wanted so bad to bring everybody into the church. But now that I'm a, a pastor, I want so bad to get everybody out of the church. You know what I mean? You know, to be the church outside the church. You know, to understand that God has given you specific purpose. You know, specific purpose exactly where he has positioned you to be a light. Amen. And so let's go to Matthew chapter 5 this morning. I'm going to read this short passage. And then I got three people that I asked to share a testimony. Because I want everybody here to hear what God is doing in our school system. Amen. Matthew chapter 5. Let's go to verse... 14, I, I touched upon it a little bit last week, but the Bible says in Matthew 5, 14, I'm reading from the NIV if you want to follow along, you are the light of the world, amen. 
Can you turn to your neighbor and tell him, you are the light of the world. Tell him, shine. Tell somebody, shine this morning. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone. Somebody say everyone. Everyone in the house. The Bible tells us that you were called to be a light. You were called to be a light because Jesus says he is the light of the world. Amen. And because Jesus is the light of the world, you who are Christ-like are the light of the world. Amen. And the Bible tells us that you're supposed to put the light on a hill. Amen. Not under a basket. You know what that means? You were called to shine. You were called to be visible. You were called to be present. That tells us that we weren't called to be secret agent Christians. Amen. Undercover Christians. Amen. We weren't called to be undercover because we were called to be the light. And what is the purpose of that? The Bible says in the same, or it says, give light to everyone in the house. And in the same way, let your light shine before others. Somebody say others. That they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. The Bible tells us that you were called to be a light, that wherever it is that God has uniquely positioned you, if you shine and you continue to do the work that God has called you to do, the Bible says that you will uh, cause the people around you to glorify him. And then the Bible tells us that if the Son of Man be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And so I want to leave you with three things before I call up these volunteers. Number one, what does it mean to do good work? Because anybody can do good things. You don't have to believe in God to do something good. But the type of good work that God is talking about in this passage is, is, is three things. One, the good work that God talks about is divinely ordained by him. It's something that has come from God. It is something that aligns with his word. And it aligns with his heart. Amen. It was appointed by God. All right. Number two, good work that comes from God will always be for the benefit of others. Come on, somebody. Look at your neighbor and tell him, I'm doing it for you. It's for you. Good work that comes from God is always to the benefit of those that God has positioned around you. You were called to elevate a community. And as you engage people and build relationship and minister the gospel, you begin to elevate your community. Amen. It's for the benefit of others. And lastly, number three, and the most important one, good work that comes from God will bring God glory. Good work that comes from God will bring him glory. God is all about his glory. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I want to see the glory of God on our community. I want to see the glory of God in our schools today, the glory of God, his presence in our neighborhoods, in our homes, with our neighbors and our friends, our family and our loved ones. Come on. We want to see God's glory. And so the Bible says that we are called to shine a light wherever you are, to shine a light, to be a light in the darkness. Amen. And so I asked three, uh, three volunteers this morning to come and share about how they've been shining a light in the schools. Because I don't know if you know this, but our church, we have a lot of people in the DOE. And I believe we were uniquely positioned to love on children and to love on the next generation. And so this morning at the end of service, we're going to celebrate all of our DOE faculty, all the students, because God knows they had a tough year. Amen. If you had a tough year, say amen. Amen. Oh, I don't got that many lays, Uncle Chuck. But we want to celebrate our DOE and really encourage them and, and invest in them, sow in them. But, you know, in the meantime, I want Jessica, if Jessica, if you can come up, can we give Jessica a hand, some encouragement? She's going to share a little bit about what God has been doing at uh, right up the hill at Kipapa Elementary School. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Jessica. It's good to see you all this morning. Um, before I kind of talk more about what's been going on in this preschool program, I'm going to show you guys a video. And to give you a little bit of context, um, I was able to work um, with a nonprofit non organization called Building Blocks Hawaii. It's basically a free literacy preschool program. 
Um, and I didn't realize until I started helping there that preschool is actually really expensive. And so to give this community, um, Kipapa and like the surrounding like Mililani area, just the opportunity to get that education for their kids for free was such a blessing. Um, so I did that along with my mom, um, Auntie Josie over there, and Keisha, who's out in the fellowship hall right now. But I want to show you guys a video real quick. Um, this is a video that we showed to the kids at the end of the school year. Um, we were online, um, like everyone else, on Zoom. So we had three and four-year-olds, and so you'll see pictures of them also with the different projects they did and the different books that they read throughout the school year, and just a little message that we had as the staff to them um, for completing the year. next year with my magic glasses I can see that congratulations Yay! hi kids it was great seeing all the progress you made this school year keep getting excited to learn more in the future congratulations hey there I loved being able to see you guys grow and learn so much this school year and I'm super proud of all of you hi children one of our friends wanted to be here today because she wanted to see you for one last time. You remember Kiana? Sure we do. Well, boys and girls, what I wanted to tell you is that you are amazing. You are awesome. This year, we read a lot of stories, we sang a lot of songs, and we, we played a lot of fun games, and we had a blast, didn't we? Yes, boys and girls, we did. And I am so, so proud of you, boys and girls. 
So may God bless you and may God bless your family. Aloha. Okay, you ready? Hey guys, if you're happy that you did, and clap your hands. I'm super proud of you guys for finishing your first year of preschool. You did it! So that was pretty much an overview of the whole school year. Um, and you kind of saw that in the video, there were three sessions that we, three, three sessions that we had. Um, and they were all on Zoom. And so I, as well as my mom, worked with the three-year-old teachers, as well as that teacher, the one with the magic glasses, that's Auntie Kim. And then Keisha was able to work with the four-year-old with Auntie Jenny, the one with the puppet, that one. Um, <laughs> One of the best things that I took away from that whole experience of the school year was um, just how much these these people loved these kids um, with God's love. You know, um, every morning that we met for the school day, we would start off with like 30 minutes of just praying intently for them. Um, and we also have been praying that God would even flood, you know, Holy Spirit, his presence would flood and invade the Zoom rooms, like right when they open it, you know, and it was so evident that God was there, even if we weren't explicitly talking about God. And um, I think one of the last things I'll mention that I really saw God um, have a lot of glory in was, um, if you notice, one of the books they read was called uh, The Way I Feel. And aside from teaching them how to read or how to say their letters or their numbers and their colors and all these things, they also wanted to do some socio-emotional learning. And so I, I, don't, I don't think I realized this until I got older, but I wish that teachers would have like made me more connected to my emotions that young when I was like three or four um, and have learned how to process emotions. And that's what they did in this program. That's why she said, oh, I feel really happy today. Um, so they got those opportunities, and they also were able to do affirmations every single day, um, especially in the classroom that I was working in. And each morning at the start of each session, the kids would say an affirmation, and the teacher would give it to them. So some days it would be like, today um, I am loved, and we, they would have to say it to another classmate too. I'm loved, and you are loved too. Or I'm a good friend, and you're a good friend too. And not only are they like speaking life over themselves, but we were able to teach them how to do that, not only for themselves, but for other people. And so um, just keep praying for this program. Um, they're going to be going live in person at Inspire Church. And so instead of 30 minutes with the kids, um, they'll get an hour and a half. Um, so not only with just the kids, but their parents who have to sit with them. So it's a good opportunity to not just minister to the kids, but to their parents too. So thank God for um, building blocks and yeah, keep praying for what God's gonna do next for them. Thank you. Thank you, Jess. And so if you guys know uh, or have any three or four year olds that are interested in a free uh, preschool literacy program, you know, let us know and then we'll connect you. And, you know, it's so important what they're doing because how many know that you can't save a city by yourself? There's no one church that's going to bring Milani to Jesus. We got to partner with the kingdom. Amen. And so we partner with Inspire. We partner with uh, Building Blocks Hawaii and, and we do it together. Uh, Clinton, let me ask Clinton to come up real quick. Clinton's representing a... What God is doing at Ka'ala Elementary over in Oahiwa, him and his uh, team over there, Auntie Michelle and her team over there. So. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, my name is Clinton, and I work over at Ka'ala. Um, so uh, it's really a, uh, a good opportunity to be, you know, being in there. Oh, wow, that's loud. Being, um, being working with the kids and um, helping them out. Uh, well. Uh, I started off as an A plus uh, aide at first, um, and so me and the we actually me and my friends, the young adults, we actually all work there, and it's really cool because um, we don't we don't like Cody call that we don't uh, we we all on the same page some uh, all the time, and we always um, 
know uh, how to help each other when we're, you know, out the day or like, you know, somebody had to go use bathroom or something, you know. But uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's really a really good opportunity for us and the young adults, uh, me and the young adult, to um, reach out for the kids. And um, yeah, uh, after the COVID hit, uh, we stopped um, uh, schooling and everybody else. Uh, we stopped, and uh, when we were, when we came back, um, it was it was a quite a little uh, few little kids that came out. Um, a lot of them were still um, online schooling, and uh, some of them stayed. I uh, came in person, so a lot of them were, or a lot of them were A plus, and so we uh, it was a great opportunity because we had uh, one on one time with them. You know, um, everybody had like. Uh, two or three kids and like a small group and it, it's it was fun actually it was fun um there's this kid that um uh before when the COVID hit he was always uh, on the side never really get to play a lot um always getting talked down and stuff all this negativity towards him and other kids but uh when we were in a small group I actually had to um or actually God put uh, him on my heart, you know, just to minister to him, you know, be, you know, loving him like how, you know, kids who don't have, you know, that kind of type of love at home. And so, yeah, I was just building my relationship with this kid and um, encourage him every time I go out and play sports, uh, basketball, and yeah, he's super good now. Well, not super good, but he can shoot and he can make a hoop and yeah. <laughs> And so, yeah, uh, slowly uh, we gained a lot of kids coming back, and um, it was it's quite a handful when a lot of kids came, and we had all that regulation, like, you know, six feet apart from the kids, and like, you know, everybody has to wear masks, and so we, we followed through, but um, it was kind of, you know, because we haven't really seen each other for like so much a year, or, or a year, um, we couldn't really like love on them the way that we loved them before COVID hit, you know, and so um, yeah, it was uh, kind of bummed, but you know we kind of find ways to um, love on them differently, and that's I think that's what uh, God kind of gave us a challenge, you know, you know, loving them in you know, different ways where you know we didn't have before when COVID hit, you know, and so yeah, it was it was really good, and uh, what do you call that? Sorry. And so, move on. So, uh, the school actually offered me another type of job. It was their tech assistant. And so, I kind of went on board to their actual faculty. Uh, and so, that opened up. <laughs> At first, I didn't want to do it because um, it was computers and a lot of uh, technical things that I was like, I don't know, you know. But um, thank God, he pushed me to step in, you know, get my foot wet. And so, it opened my eyes like, oh, God, thank you, because um, I didn't really have to work with, like, so much of computers, but it gave me uh, so much opportunity to reach out even more with the kids, you know? And so not just after school program, but during the school, you know, I get to minister to the kids, and I get to reach out to the young ones, you know, just to love on them and just to, you know, be there. And so, yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's see. And so, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, oh, another thing is um, uh, we have this, um, you know, this Micronesian, uh, like uh, Micronesian kids that um, they really always, you know, look down on a lot. And so it, it kind of like made my heart kind of, or broke, <laughs> broke for them. And then um, it made me want to, uh, you know, reach out to them even more than that community. And so because not of not a lot of them um, understand English or not a lot of them speak English and so the way that they talk is the way that they talk at home which it kind of made the teachers you know don't kind of like have to like you know figure out how to talk to them you know and so because I'm Marshallese it was really easy to connect with them and so we had I have this little kid that um, I have to watch like their classes every day at recess and so his name is David and so this kid named David, uh, he's Marshallese, pretty sure we're related now. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, he found out that I was Marshallese, and so he's like, you're Marshallese? Oh, 
cool, you can call me Junjun. And so that's his Marshley's name, Junjun. And so I was like, oh, cool. And so that kind of gave me like a one step into the, the trust that I have with him, you know? And so I was like, that's cool. And so spread, you know, the word spread out. I was, they had a Marshley staff in their, in their school. So a lot of kids, a lot of Marshley's kids and Marcanesian kids came up to me and was like, you're Marshley's? And so they challenged me with a bunch of Marshley's word, words that I forgot. But it kind of challenged me to, you know, learn more about my culture or get back all those, you know, knowledge that I used to have when I was a little kid. And so, yeah, I think that's what, uh, or that's been, God's been put on my heart as them in that community, you know, to just reach out and just to love them the way that God loves us, you know? And so, yeah, um, anything else? Oh, I have a, I have a Christian boss. And so every eight, eight o'clock in the morning, we like pray, you know, about staff, you know, about students, safe traveling. And so that's pretty cool because my old job when I used to work at McDonald's, ooh, you don't pray. <laughs> you cook the food, serve the food, get out. <laughs> and so, yeah. But yeah, God is good in every ways, you know. So, yeah. We're going to pray that uh, God would raise Clinton to be our Marshallese pastor, amen. pastor of that community. Amen. And then lastly, I want to invite John. Where's John? Could you give John a hand this morning? Uh, John's been uh, making an impact in the Wailua community in North Shoreside, Wailua Elementary School. Hello, hello. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is John. Um, I am currently a sixth grade teacher at Wailua Elementary School. This is my, I'm going to be entering my sixth year of teaching, right? It's crazy. Um, and actually, my first five years, um, I was actually teaching third grade. And, you know, I, li I like third grade. And then this past year, uh, they asked if I wanted to move up to sixth grade, you know, the, the older kids. And, uh, those of you that have kids or have worked with kids or have been kids, all of you have been kids before, you know that 12-year-old, that, that 11, 12-year-old age where you know, they start to move into like puberty and stuff and then they get really awkward and the attitude starts coming in and they, they, for whatever reason, they learn how to talk back and have added, like, I loved it, you know? That, third grade, third grade is, they're cute, but you know, for me, like, I don't really do with the cute. I like the attitude. You know, like sixth grade, like third graders, I teach them how to multiply. Uh, sixth graders, I can really press into who they are. You know, their personalities, um, you know, how they think about, the, what they think about themselves. Like the whole goal for sixth grade is to send them off to middle school ready, you know. And for me, it was, it was such a blessing to be able to move up to sixth grade in the midst of a COVID pandemic year. You know, and just to give you some insight of what our day-to-day -day kind of look like, um, for the first 70% of the year, maybe, I would have kids alternating each week. Um, they all had masks. Uh, we had to line them up outside, six feet apart, take their temperatures as they walk in. It, it literally looked like a hospital. It was crazy. Like, there's wipes everywhere. Like, I had to have a shield on. Now, on top of teaching, like, my 15 kids, um, through my, like, that were there in person, I had to teach an additional 10 kids who were on a, a computer screen at the same time. So, like, I have kids here, I have kids there, are they paying attention, are they, are they six feet apart, and then having to wipe everything, it was crazy. It was an absolute mess, you know, and I, I can't tell you, like, this, this year was probably the hardest year I've had to work. On top of that, like, this specific group of kids that I had, um, they've, they're, at our school, they're, they're pretty, historically one of the harder kids as far as grouping wise like the 12 year old boys man like they're they're something else like i'm telling you the amount of like detentions and suspensions we have to give out is outrageous like we issue school computers and kids selling their school computer kind of thing you know like so i mean you you can just imagine like this year we were just hit with a lot of adversity right it was just difficult and a couple years back, uh, God had really pressed it in my heart. God had challenged me like, you know, John, you're called to be a teacher and not just to be like the fun 
energizing the young teacher that teaches music or graphics or whatever at school, but um, I'm, really I'm really challenging you to father your students. And you know, what does that look like? Because you know, in the DOE, it's pretty difficult to um, be open about praying and going into the word with your students, but um, day by day, God has been really uh, forming my heart to, to father these kids. You think about it like, for, like students half the day spend time with their parents and the other half of the day is with the teacher, you know, and um, having an opportunity to parent these kids and father these kids because some of them don't hear like I love yous on regular basis. Some of them don't hear, don't have opportunities to share about what they're struggling with or what they have a hard time with and I have opportunities to do that. Um, this past year, uh, I'll tell you like, um, this year was the ultimate year to give the excuse to really not do anything over the top because COVID, COVID has been all over the place. You know, you, I'm sure you guys seen like graduations have fallen through or like, made, like field trips, there's no field trips, no large activities. Like this year was supposed to be May Day and those of you that, have grew, that grew up with, with May Day, that, that's a big thing. And we, we couldn't do any of that because of COVID. And um, a lot of the teachers, including myself, already had a hard time trying to teach online. So the, the thought process was, you know, let's just get through, let's just survive this year. But you know, if God calls you to be a light, you're not, you're not placed in a position to just survive. You're placed in a position to thrive, right? And really putting myself in position to start with just my grade level, just my students. Because um, that's what you know, God gave me responsibility for, just my students, my classroom. You know, if you can be excellent with them, I can, I can uh, trust you with more, but you got to do with what you have. So uh, really setting the tone of, you know, these kids deserve, like, something memorable. Like, these kids deserve to, to enjoy this year like kids should. You know, kids deserve, like, they, they need to be, uh, they need to feel loved on campus, right? They don't, they don't need to feel, oh, you know, 2021 was just a throwaway year. Like, let's try again next year. Like, especially coming through my class, that's the last thing I want. I want my year, like... For me, I want, my, I, want, I want to be that teacher they write about in high school of who your favorite teacher was, right? So really making efforts to pour in and make sure that they feel loved. You know, because like I said, like DOE is really difficult about talking about Jesus, but you know, if I can, you know that feeling when you walk into church and you see that auntie that, that's, you know, hugged you every week and, oh, I love, so good to see you. I, you feel so warm and you, you feel safe and you feel love. Oh, this is God's love. If I can put that same feeling with my students every single day, then I know I, I, I won the day. I'm successful. You know, so put in, I'm going to show you some videos and pictures of stuff that we did. I know Sierra's going to queue it up for me. Um, to put into perspective, like, May Day for sixth graders is probably the biggest May Day of their lives. Like, they're crowned king and queen, like they're honored at May Day, and uh, it's a really big event. And, and again, we can't do it because CDC, like we had to cancel all big activities, but this is just an example of uh, kind of what it looked like for us. On, and, and it's funny, now that I talk about and think about this stuff, it sounds like we do just fun stuff, but trust me, like I did teach in between all of this. But this was what we did in place of our May Day. Like the kids were able to, and this is all the students, like they picked the songs, they did the choreography, they, they told me where to film. And we did like this 10 minute music video of, of them uh, like contributing and you know, taking ownership of this, right? So this is just an example. I'll show you about a minute of it. You can play it, Sierra. I'll tell you, man, this took so much planning. You have no idea how difficult and how much time we spent doing this. But this is, this is, the, this is all the kids right here.
that boy, he told me, Mr. Delstrace, I'm going to bring a marshmallow costume. I had no idea what he meant. You know, and then when he got excited, these guys got excited. You know, and it's funny because, uh, you, can, you can pause it, thanks, Jero. It's funny because the demeanor of students walking in, they're, they're very, for the lack of a better term, they're very hopeless. Like, they come in like, oh, we, we can't do anything. Banquets canceled, graduations canceled. We can't do any of this stuff. And um, the thing about being a light is that, like, when people are exposed to it and people experience uh, us being lights in situations like that, it gets really contagious. You know, they start to get filled with hope and they, they start to enjoy being there. And, you know, it's funny, like, my, my sixth grade, my co-teachers, and I, I love them so much. Uh, they're, they're the type that have been teaching for 20 plus years. They've been there for a while. And me, like, kind of like, let's do this, let's do this. It's like, it's like a little puppy, like, pulling, like, old dog's leashes, you know what I mean? And I'm just like, no, we got to do this. You got to, John, you know, but COVID, I'm like, you know, we should just, no, 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 we got to do this, we got to do this, we got to do this. And uh, every end of the year for sixth grade, they usually celebrate, uh, they kick off the end of the year by going to Dave and Buster's. And they, they get to eat there, they get to play games. It's this whole hurrah thing. And of course, we can't go. So instead, we decide to plan a banquet. You know, And you can ask my wife, like, I think this is the latest I've ever stayed on campus consecutively. Usually, I'm out by like 3 o'clock. You know, I was on campus like 5.30 every day for like three months straight. And it wasn't just doing this kind of work, but um, like having kids come in and talk to me, or, or meeting with kids, meeting with parents, um, being able to check in with them, and being available, and um, doing what I can uh, to, to, again, father my students, right? So you can start showing up the next picture, Sierra. So um, these are my students. I have three of them. I have three groups of them. And what we did, you can keep going. So for banquet, uh, we got them all dressed up. Uh, we got them all spiffied up, and they got to walk around campus and see all their old teachers. Um, parents got to come and take pictures, and uh, we, we did our best to keep them distance. And just the fact of parents like, oh, we can still do this? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. And I'll tell you, man, like, again, when, you, when you're being a light, it becomes contagious a little bit. And parents start to get filled, and um, they start to kind of go with the flow a little bit. So now everyone's starting to sh emanate this light, and it starts to take off. You know, you can go to the next slide. Um, so for banquet, we asked the community, uh, we're doing raffle prizes, and we have 60 kids. Do you think we can, you know, squeeze out 60 prizes so every kid gets one? And we, we sent it out to the community, sent it out to the teachers, to, the, to Wailua. And I'll tell you the, the outcome. Just gift cards alone, we had about like 70 gift cards. Just gift cards. Goodie bags, we had over 150. Um, separate prizes, we had maybe another 70 or 80. And this is like Dole, Canary, uh, Dole Plantation. You know, they gave us like these gift bags. There are like four or five of them. Each one was like $70 each. Um, we got like these Nike bags like from, from athletic directors. They gave us, uh, HIC gave us like accessories for surfboards because it's a big surfing community out in Haleiwa. And all these surf companies were just donating and giving. We had to go through the raffles like three and a half, four times just to get rid of all the gifts. We had to make up games to give them gifts for no reason. Like, who can be the most quiet? You guys go get gifts, you know? Like, we just had so much. Uh, Matsumoto Shave Ice came out and helped, like, they set up a machine for free. You know, like, we, it, it's, it's surprising if you ever talk to, like, these students. Um, I gave them a survey about where they want to get food from because I wanted them to buy into this. Like, hey, this is for you. We're making this excellent for you. Where do you want to eat that you've never eaten before? And some of these kids haven't even gone to, like, Wingstop or like Buffalo Wild Wings, and so many kids wanted chicken wings. I'm like, you can get anywhere on the island and they want chicken wings, you know? So after they filled out this, filled out this survey, like uh, we catered 10, 12 different places, you know, like uh, if you can see like our staff, like they decorated our campus, uh, people donated potted plants and flowers and we had all these huge decorations. Oh, you can keep going. 
knocker ball came out and we had knocker balls for the students and I'll, I'll tell you like again these boys are kind of rough oh I had so much energy to knock over these boys and this was the only time I was allowed to do it yeah, you see exactly that you can go to the next one we had gaming stations where we had like four or five consoles where students would just come in and play games we had board games that they can do the next one uh, even community members came out and they ran games on the basketball courts with them and we held the students there till about five o'clock. <laughs> From eight o'clock to five o'clock, we, we, we celebrated and we made sure that uh, they felt loved. You know, we made, and I think the, cra the biggest takeaway is that, you know, once, once you kind of break the seal of being a light or being a positive attitude on campus or wherever your workplace is, it starts to pour out to other people. And they, they wanted to find ways that they can be a light in this situation as well. You know, like we had more than enough than what we, we, we asked for a little bit and we, we, we have leftover stuff in my room. So I have boxes of stuff in my room still yet. Um, I think the craziest thing is that afterwards, I got all this feedback from parents and staff, and they're like, you know, John, uh, we've had banquet. I've been to like four banquets over the years, and this was hands down the best one. You know, like the, mute, the video was amazing. You guys are gonna do it again next year, right? We should we forget Dave and Buster's. We should just do this every year. And it's exhausting, you know. Like I think about like, no, you know, next year is we can just go back, but then. That's the momentum that we're building right now. Like it, it's cool because people are asking for that over and over, which which tells me that we're starting to leave an imprint on the community. You know that they want to be part of us pouring into these students, and uh, they want them to feel loved and to take this away. That I can guarantee that these students aren't going to remember this year because it was a COVID year, but because of everything else that we did and um, everything that the teachers did for them as well. You know, so yeah, I, I think I think I was I was I was really choked up at the end of this year, because third grade, right? I I love to make my students cry at the end of the year. Like at the end of the year, before the bell rings, I'll take out my piano and I'll sing like a farewell song and I'll make them cry, <laughs> knowing, knowing full well that they come back to my room every year afterwards for recess. They're there for three years. So fourth grade, they come back. Fifth grade, they come back. Sixth grade, they come back. And then by sixth grade, I'm just like, nah, just go. Just go, just go. <laughs> now that I have sixth graders, I only have one opportunity. And I think for a lot of us, like, I, I know for myself in the DOE, um, being in sixth grade, I only have one opportunity to be a light for these students, to leave an imprint on the community. I only have one shot. And if, if it looks like planning a banquet, if it looks like staying after school and talking, or, or just being available for the students, like, I think we have to, as a church, we got to take advantage of every opportunity, right? So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you, John. I'm going to ask you to come up to the front here. I want to ask all of our DOE faculty, DOE staff, if you work at a school or at the Department of Education, I'm going to ask you to come up here to the front, and we want to celebrate you this morning. I know I didn't uh, tell everybody, but yeah, come on down. Come on down. I'm going to call you out if you don't come on down. <laughs> Can we give them a hand this morning? God's been doing some things in our school. Man, yeah, come down, come down, come down. And all of our kids, if you were a student this year, I want you to come down. We want to celebrate you too. It hasn't been easy this year being a student either. Amen. I just want to thank all of our faculty, our teachers, our students, those who work with this generation. You know, it, sometimes it's really not enough just to say thank you. But as a church, I believe we got to surround our teachers. Amen. And we got to surround this community because we have a lot of 
discouraged teachers today? And here's the thing, before we pray, I just want you to understand something about what we're trying to accomplish this morning. You know, like we have a lot of different people positioned in different areas, you know, trying to shine a light. But the truth is what we're really trying to accomplish as a church and as the kingdom of God is we want to engage the community and we want to engage the culture Because right now, we're kind of at a crossroads with the church and the culture. And it seems like they're going in two completely different directions. And I need us to understand this morning that if we want to make an impact in our community, we have to start bridging those relationships and really us coming around them and really loving people well. Amen. Because the church has been designed to be the pillar of truth. And if we abandon culture... And if we abandon the community, then we leave it to government officials and other people to be the the moral compass of this generation. And so it's important for the church to be the light in the community. And that means we got to love on people and we got to surround the people who are loving on people. And we got to do it together. Amen. And we got to just put our arms around our community, whether it's Mililani, Kapolei, Wahiwa, Wailua, wherever it is that God has positioned us, we're just going to love people and love people well. Amen. And encourage people to continue being a light. Amen. And the Bible says we got to put them on a hill. So that's what we're doing. We're putting them on a hill this morning so that we know everybody can see what God is doing. Because God is faithful. Amen. Let's reach out our hands and we're going to pray over this community. Lord, I just want to thank you for every teacher, every faculty member, every student, every parent, all those who are represented this morning, every tribe, every tongue, every family, every generation, every city, every neighborhood that's represented this morning. And I ask, Lord, even now, Holy Spirit, would you come rest on them? Would you come rest on us? Because, Lord, if you're not in it, we don't want to do it. And if you're not leading, we don't want to go. And, Lord, we just want to go where you go. Say what you want to say. Lord, lead where you call us to lead. And I thank you, Lord, because you have ordained each and every one of these men and women today, Lord, to be uniquely positioned, to shine a light and make an impact where you have positioned them, oh God. And I thank you even now. Would you give them and anointing, Lord, to be able to discern rightly, Lord, to to build relationships with those you have entrusted them with, Lord, to hear from you directly and minister to them, love them the way that you would love them, Lord, in Jesus' name. And I ask, Lord, for your word, Lord, that would keep them anchored in your truth. Lord, I ask, Lord, for intimacy in their relationship with you, that they would be anchored in your love, Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord. and, And I thank you that as they continue to go forth and advance your kingdom in the department of education lord would you help them lord to love on the government officials the leadership that we have lord to pray for our leaders to love and support our leadership lord in jesus name lord to be the church that you have called us to be and so i ask lord that even in the middle of the night lord those who are discouraged would you give them hope today Those who are struggling, would you give them rest today? Those who are lost, would you give them direction today? And I ask, Lord, that this morning you would fill their love tank, oh God, that they would leave feeling uh, fulfilled this morning, Lord, that their work is not in vain, Lord, but in all things. You said in your word, do not despise small beginnings, Lord, but you are rumbling something. You you are creating, you are building momentum, Lord. You are doing a new thing, and we declare breakthrough in our community in the name of Jesus. We declare revival in the name of Jesus that you would bring this community to life. Lord, the life that we have in you, Lord, and we just want to thank you for these things. Lord, cover them, protect them, guard them, and keep them. Bless them, restore them, and we thank you for these things. Lord, we love you, and we give you all glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen, amen. Give God a shout of praise this morning. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Take some time to 
Give him some love today. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I want to thank you for being here. I mean, are y'all blessed this morning? Are y'all inspired to be a light in your workplace today? Amen. Are y'all hungry? Is that what it is? Y'all hungry? Amen. But let me, uh, Sarah, let me close in prayer real quick and I'll dismiss everybody. Lord, I just thank you for each and every one of our, of our uh, family that's here this morning. And I ask, Lord, that they uh, would be blessed leaving today. Lord, to know that you have called them for such a purpose. Lord, such a divine, divinely ordained purpose. Lord, that you know exactly what you are doing when you have placed us where you have placed us. And so I ask Holy Spirit, would you give us a moment with God, Lord, that would transform our minds, Lord, uh, renew our minds in the way that we come into work, in the way that we love and minister to the people that you have surrounded us with. And I thank you, Lord, that you would help us to continue doing life together, Lord, in Jesus' name, and to continue shining your light. And so I thank you for all the families as we go home today, Lord, uh, take take us home safely. And I thank you for a, a time of refreshment today. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys for coming. Amen. We'll see you all next week. Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope that you are blessed by today's message. For more updates, please feel free to follow us on our social media accounts, download our app, or you can visit our website by scanning the QR code or clicking the link in the description. We love you, and we can't wait to see you guys next week.